Since April 21, 1967, Greece had been under the dictatorial rule of the military, a regime which abolished civil rights, dissolved political parties, and exiled, imprisoned, and tortured politicians and citizens based on their political beliefs. 1973 found the military junta leader Yorios Papadopoulos having undertaken a liberalization process of the regime, which included the release of political prisoners and the partial lifting of censorship, as well as promises of a new constitution and new elections for a return to civilian rule. Opposition elements, including socialists, were thus given the opportunity to undertake political action against the junta. The United States took a clandestine interest in suppressing socialists and had a CIA operative named John Maury who was in consultation supporting the junta leaders. American Vice President Spiro Agnew praised the junta as the best thing to happen to Greece since Pericles ruled in ancient Athens. The junta, trying to control every aspect of politics, had interfered with student syndicalism since 1967 by banning student elections in universities, forcibly drafting students and imposing non-elected student union leaders in the National Students' Union FA. These actions eventually created anti-junta sentiments among students, such as geology student Kostas Yorgakis, who committed suicide in 1970 in Genoa, Italy, as an act of protest against the junta. The first massive public action against the junta came from students on the 21st of February 1973, when law students went on strike and barricaded themselves inside the buildings of the law school of the University of Athens in the centre of the capital, demanding repeal of the law that imposed forcible drafting of quote-unquote subversive youths as 88 of their peers had been forcibly drafted to the army. The police were ordered to intervene and many students were reportedly subjected to police brutality. The events at the law school are often cited as the prelude to the Polytechnic Uprising. The student uprising was also heavily influenced by the youth movements of the 1960s, notably the events of May 1968 in France. An anti-dictatorial student movement was growing among the youth and the police utilised brutal methods and torture towards them in order to confront the threat. On the 14th of November, 1973, students at the Athens Polytechnic went on strike and started protesting against the military regime. As the authorities stood by, the students were calling themselves the Free Besieged, or in Greek, Elefiri Poliorgimeni, which is a reference to the poem by Greek poet Dionysius Solomos and inspired by the Ottoman siege of Messalonghi. Their main demand slogan was Bread, Education, Liberty. An assembly was formed spontaneously and decided to occupy the Polytechnic. The two main student parties, the Marxist pro-Soviet A. Afe and Rigas, did not endorse the movement. Leftists and anarchists initiated the sit-in. While they contended that the uprising should demand capitalism's abolition, the larger, unconvinced rebel group disagreed and chose instead to demand democracy's restoration. A coordination commission of the occupation was formed but had loose control over the uprising. Police had gathered outside but did not manage to break into the premises. Slogans and graffiti by the students were anti-NATO and anti-American, 
comparing the Greek junta with Nazi Germany. During the second day of the occupation, thousands of people from Athens poured in to support the students. A radio transmitter was set up and Maria Vamanaki, then a student and member of AFA, popularized the slogan, Bread Education, Freedom. The demands of the occupation were anti-imperialistic and anti-NATO. Third parties that allied themselves with the student protests were the construction workers and some farmers from Egara who coincidentally protested on the same day in Athens. A proclamation was announced on Friday the 16th of November by the CCO that the students were aiming to bring down the junta. During the afternoon demonstrations and attacks against neighbouring ministries took place. Central roads were closed, fires erupted and Molotov cocktails were thrown for the first time in Athens. The junta decided to reply firmly by repressing the riots. Snipers were placed at buildings next to the polytechnic and assassinated 24 people in total. Students barricaded themselves in and constructed a radio station that repeatedly broadcasted across Athens. Polytechnion here, Polytechnion here. People of Greece, the Polytechnion is the flag bearer of our struggle and your struggle, our common struggle against the dictatorship and for democracy. Maria Vamanaki, later a politician, was one of the major speakers. Soon, thousands of workers and youngsters joined them protesting inside and outside of the Athens Polytechnic. In the early hours of November 17, 1973, the transitional government sent a tank crashing through the gates of the Athens Polytechnic. Soon after that, Spiros Marquisinis himself had the task to request Papavopoulos to reimpose martial law. Prior to the crackdown, the city lights had been shut down and the area was only lit by the campus lights powered by the university generators. An AMX-30 tank crashed the rail gate of the Athens Polytechnic at around 3am. In unclear footage, clandestinely filmed by a Dutch journalist, the tank is shown bringing down the main steel entrance to the campus, to which people were clinging. Documentary evidence also survives in recordings of the Athens Polytechnic radio transmissions from the occupied premises. In these, a young man's voice is heard desperately asking the soldiers, whom he calls brothers in arms, surrounding the building complex to disobey the military orders and not to fight brothers protesting. The voice carries on to an emotional outbreak, reciting the lyrics of the Greek national anthem until the tank enters the yard, at which time transmission ceases. An official investigation undertaken after the fall of the junta declared that no students of the Athens Polytechnic were killed during the incident. Total recorded casualties amount to 24 civilians killed outside Athens Polytechnic campus. These include 19-year-old Michael Mikroyanis, reportedly shot to death by officer Nikolaos Vertilis, high school students Diomedes Komenos and Alexandros Spartivis, and a five-year-old boy caught in the crossfire in the suburb of Zografu. The records of the trials held following the collapse of the junta document the circumstances of the deaths of many civilians during the uprising, and although the number of dead has not been contested by historical research, it remains a subject of political controversy. In addition, hundreds of civilians were left injured during the events. Ioannidis, involvement in inciting unit commanders of the security forces to commit criminal acts during the Athens Polytechnic uprising, was noted in the indictment presented to the court by the prosecutor during the Greek junta trials. And in his subsequent conviction in the Polytechnion trial, where he was found to have been morally responsible 
before the events. The uprising triggered a series of events that put an abrupt end to the regime's attempted liberalization process under Spiros Marquisinis. Papavopoulos, during his liberalization process and even during the dictatorship, attempted to re-engineer the Greek political landscape and failed repeatedly. In his biographical notes, published as a booklet by supporters in 1980, it is mentioned that he attended Polytechnion, the prime engineering school in the country, but did not graduate. Brigada Dimitrios Ioannidis, a disgruntled junta hardliner, used the uprising as a pretext to re-establish public order and staged a counter-coup that overthrew Yorgos Papavopoulos and Spiros Marquisinis on November 25, the same year. Military law was reinstated and the new junta appointed General Fedon Gizikis as president. The economist Avamandios and Vrutsopoulos as prime minister, although Ioannidis remained the behind the scenes strongman. Ioannidis' abortive coup attempt on the 15th of July 1974 against Archbishop Macarius III, who was then president of Cyprus, was met by an invasion of Cyprus by Turkey. These events caused the military regime to implode and ushered in the area of metapolitepsy. Costadinos Karamanlis was invited from self-exile in France and was appointed Prime Minister of Greece by President Fedon Gizikis. Parliamentary democracy was thus restored and the Greek legislative elections of 1974 were the first free elections held in a decade. The 17th of November is currently observed as a holiday in Greece for all educational establishments. Commemorative services are held and students attend school only for these, while some schools and all universities stay closed during the day. The central location for the commemorations is the campus of the Polytechnio. The campus is closed on the 15th, the day the students first occupied the campus on 1973. Students and politicians lay wreaths on a monument within the Polytechnio on which the names of the Polytechnio students killed during the Greek resistance in the 1940s are inscribed, while a catalogue of victims by the Seven Years Junta is uttered. The commemoration day ends traditionally with a demonstration that begins from the campus of the Polytechnio and ends at the United States Embassy. The day is often a day of social unrest, where mass riots occur during the entire night. Two protesters were killed during the 1980 demonstration, Yakovos Kumis and Stamatina Kanelopoulou. The student uprising is hailed by many as a valiant act of resistance against the military dictatorship and therefore as a symbol of resistance to tyranny. The student struggle had also a lasting effect on Greek anarchism, despite the far less minor influence in the uprising itself. Their unfulfilled vision became a rallying cry for Greek anarchists internally. The now defunct far left organization, Revolutionary Organization 17th November, is named after the last day of a polytechnic uprising. <laughs>